if hope were a fuel tank, then the Hummer is running on fumes. General Motors has set a May 1st deadline for someone, anyone, to buy a step in and buy the SUV brand. Now, a deal with a Chinese firm to buy the company fell through last month. Uh, CNN's Tim Lister now looks at the rise and fall of the Hummer, a vehicle that is, it seems, not too big to fail, but is failing because it is perhaps simply too big. It was designed as a workhorse for the military, rugged, unstoppable, masculine, the 21st century successor to the Jeep. And then a certain Hollywood celebrity saw it. I'm going to get the whole collection of Hummers just to make sure that someone out there doesn't have something that I don't have. God forbid. And he pestered the makers of the Humvee to produce a civilian version. It became a very expensive fashion accessory, and not just for the future governor of California. Ferrari, 50 Cent was one of a succession of hip-hop artists, from Tupac Shakur to Young Jeezy, to sing the Hummer's praises. Athletes, too, coveted it. Lennox Lewis rode on top of one in a parade through Memphis, one heavyweight on top of another. The TV ads unashamedly played on the macho advantages of driving a Hummer. The original slogan, incidentally, was restore your manhood. The Hummer relished adversity. Floods? No problem. Snow? Hey, let's be honest, compared to an H1, a Jeep's a toy. Ouch. It also helped sales that the military version was everywhere. Bosnia, Iraq, Afghanistan. Buying anything American and buying anything that's associated with the war is going to have, going to have an effect. As sales boomed in the days when gas prices weren't an issue, GM introduced the neater, some might say more girly, H3. In post-Saddam Iraq, it became a status symbol. Nice car, new car, everybody that look at me like this, oh wow, Humvee. But others hated it as an environmental villain. Hummers were even vandalized by eco-saboteurs. And then came the twin evils of high gas prices and recession. There's no question about our sales, you know, diminished probably by 40, 50 percent. This dealer in Connecticut switched from selling Hummers to selling Chinese-made scooters. Suddenly, the gas-greedy Hummer seemed politically incorrect. The governor turned to a hybrid Hummer. And here was a Hummer that had an electric engine in there and also a gasoline engine. But maybe too late to save a brand that had become a symbol of excess in the new age of austerity. Tim Lister, CNN, Atlanta. <laughs> well, a couple of things you may not know about the beast. It was originally built for the U.S. military in 1983 and called the High Mobility Multipurpose Wheeled Vehicle, or Humvee for short. Well, the civilian model was introduced in 1992 and called the Hummer. General Motors bought the brand in 1999 and sales grew rapidly, peaking at 71,000 sold globally in 2006. But the Hummer is a notorious fuel hog. Drivers say the H1 and H2 models get about, get this, four kilometers a litre. And soaring gas prices led to slumping sales. Just 9,000 sold last year. Well, in many ways, the Hummer was the Tyrannosaurus Rex in the age of mega vehicles. But the world, it seems, has entered a new automotive age. Big and brutish used to be sexy. So what will the new sexy look like? Well, it's Richard Seymour's job to find out. He's a designer and a futurist. Before we get to the future, let's get back to the future. Uh, the Hummer was a statement by Richard, wasn't it? Does its demise signify something of a statement too? I think what we have to understand about this thing is that it's divided into two. There's the mechanical and technical side of it, which was a gas guzzling, old-fashioned piece of kit. And then there's the imagery that's associated with it, the emotional side of it. I don't think we're going to say goodbye to the emotional fun and mm. enjoyment or machismo of vehicles in the future, but I think we are going to say goodbye to four, whatever it was, uh, four kilometers to the litre, <laughs> because that's clearly unsustainable. So, oh. But there's two things. One's the mechanical, the other's the emotional. All right, well, to the future then. What sort of statement do I make by buying, for example, a Tesla, which is uh, what we're going to show our viewers as you speak? Well, the Tesla is very interesting because it's an all-electric powered vehicle and was really the first out of the traps to show that something could be dynamic and super fast and as sexy as anything you can imagine as a sports car on the road, but would be using electricity. Now, of course, electricity itself 
isn't necessarily green because you have to get the electricity from somewhere. But it's a big statement because the acceleration of this object rivals and in some cases exceeds that of many other comparable high performance things. So it's, it's selling a big issue here. It's saying oh, you can be green but you can be powerful. Yeah, and you can be sexy as well. I yeah. quite like the look of that. All right, what about the G-Wiz which is out at the moment doing the rounds at the uh, car um, shows? Um, it's more akin to what I guess I would assume is the green car of the future. Well, <laughs> the G with bless its little heart, you know, this is something that if we take London, for instance, as a city, all of this was piled on to make it easy to try and transfer to more electric power, more, you know, reduced uh, uh, the consumption, what have you. And here we have it. It's, it's a cheap little thing. It's, it's a pity that it's quite so strange looking and you do feel a little bit odd driving it but you can imagine in the future when they see a lot more a lot that would again a lot sexier electric mm -hmm. uh, mobility in the future so this is the beginning we we owe a, a big debt of gratitude i think to the gwiz and we will in the future I think it was one of the first that really started to get to grips with this issue in London anyway. I was hoping to show our viewers some pictures of it, but the technology just, just uh, let us down this <laughs> evening. So they've got to imagine it looks a bit like a smart car or any of these very small cars that, uh, that you can imagine. As a designer and as a futurist, do car designs, Richard, lead or follow when it comes to making a statement? Uh, well, they do both, actually. Uh, I think it depends on the statement that you want to mean. Uh, if you look at where, for instance, the Prius went with Toyota, a lot of early adopters of that kind of stuff was, was the Hollywood A-list, for instance. So they wanted to associate themselves with moving away from gas guzzling. Um, I think that, well, it divides into both, really. There are some that lead us to the future, the others that don't. Mm. But the automobile industry does move very slowly, I'm afraid, when it comes to revolutionary new forms of propulsion, and that's really where we need to go next. Yeah, Richard, and with that, we're going to leave it there. We're looking here beside you at a picture of the Hummer. It's not dead, of course. It's still selling. It's just not selling at the levels that it uh, was. Richard Seymour joining you this evening as your expert.